Denton Dysplasia Type 1 by Hallie Bricker and Logan Dudzinski. Denton Dysplasia Type 1 is a rare hereditary disease involving improper dentin formation characterized by aberrant growth of dentin in the pulp chambers leading to a reduced pulp space, short blunted roots, nearly normal appearing crowns, and hypermobility of teeth. Dentin dysplasia type 1 can also be referred to as radicular dentin dysplasia. The demographics of dentin dysplasia type 1 is an autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance that affects one in every 100,000 individuals and manifests equally in males and females and is, and is in both primary and permanent dentitions equally. In the clinical findings, the symptoms will be the patient will often report hypermobility, early tooth loss, and possibly pain associated with the cyst or abscess. The signs will be normal to slightly bulbous crowns, hypermobility, potential dental abscess or cyst, and missing teeth in the patient's mouth. The radiographic analysis shows obliterated or reduced reduction of all pulp chambers, short blunted and malformed roots, periapical radiolucencies of non-carious teeth, and calcified pulp chambers with possible pulp stones. The lesion acronym is location, is dentin and pulp chambers, root canal space, the edge is well defined, Shape is the obliteration of pulp chambers to thistle-shaped pulp chambers, leading to short, blunted, and malformed roots. The internal structure is the same radio opacity as dentin, with absent or small pulp chambers and root canals if present. Other structures involve possibility of pulp stones. Number is associated with all primary and permanent teeth in the oral cavity. Size is smaller than normal root chamber, size dependent on tooth involved. The differential interpretation can be either radiation-induced tooth changes, which can manifest as tapering and shortening of the roots and mobility of the teeth. However, there can also be alterations in the crown. Or it could be dentinogenesis imperfecta, which can have obliterated or thistle-shaped pulp chamber. However, the roots are long and narrow, and there is a change in color of the crown. Or dentin dysplasia, which is normal crown appearance, with short blunted roots and mobility and obliterated pulp chambers. And the last it could potentially be is odontodysplasia, which the roots are short with wide open apices, however they have very wide pulp canals. And treatment for dentin dysplasia type 1, the key factor is early diagnosis and continuous follow-up. Most dentists just aim to preserve the existing teeth enhance occlusion, mastication, and aesthetics while extracting hopeless teeth. If it's necessary, space loss due to spontaneous exfoliation of hypermobile teeth can be avoided by the placement of removable space maintainers or orthodontic appliances. An endodontic treatment is not suggested and has a low success rate due to the obliteration of the pulp chambers. For patients with no financial restrictions, implants are the final treatment and best outcome showing success when bony augmentation and elaborate treatment planning are involved. Implants are, best, are the best option because they would, be, would eliminate mobility problems, eliminate potential for abscess, cysts, and have better aesthetics. Key points are a clinician would see normal to slightly bulbous crowns, hypermobility, potential dental abscess or cysts, and missing teeth in the patient's mouth. Radiographic analysis shows obliteration or reduction of all pulp chambers, short blunted and malformed roots, periapical radiolucencies of non-carious teeth, and calcified pulp chambers with possible pulp stones. Implants would be the best option because they would eliminate mobility problems, eliminate potential for abscess and cysts, and have better aesthetics. These are our resources that we used. And this is where we found all of our images.